They're called goat races, but sometimes it looks more like people pulling goats or goats pulling people or some combination of that. <laughs> Look at that little one. It's all in good fun. Goat judges select the prettiest, ugliest, biggest, longest horned, and best dressed goats. All breeds, all sizes, little ones, big ones, big horns. Uh, some of them can run and some of them can't run. But we have a lot of fun. And people that didn't have their own goats to bring to Falmouth were welcome, too. They could borrow a goat for the races. <laughs> I guess that's what that little guy's doing. When the annual running of the goats brought crowds to Falmouth. Visitors enjoyed food, entertainment, and shopping for unusual goat souvenirs. The highlight is goat race, but organizers have a bigger goal in mind. We drop a goat on New Year's Day. That's right, New Year's Eve. Uh, we're attempting to be, to be known as the goat capital, of uh, the international capital of, of goats. And uh, we're fast approaching that, uh, that goal. And uh, I think that by next year, we may be outnumbering Harrisburg with their strawberry. <laughs> this is the 20th year for the event. Boy, he was tuckered out. It began as a joke within the community, but now it draws thousands of visitors. Up next, Navy. We have coins, and of course, don't let's not forget. The beanie baby. <laughs> All important. Don't tell me some of the items that people have brought up. What is that? That's about a 50-year-old uh, electric train. I guess a, uh, well, it looks like a train. I, I'm not sure, but we had a local guy give it to put in a time capsule. Okay. I'm sure they'll dig that up and wonder what it is. Wind but they'll know what a Beanie Baby is, though. Yeah, everybody yeah. knows what they are. <laughs> yes. Of course, we've got a famous last of the year coin and the Pennsylvania coins. Want to hear a joke? Okay, it's only 10 o'clock. We're just getting started here. There's the uh, dining area. Take me over here to the food department. My name is Wendy Diffendahl. We are here in Noy Township, Pennsylvania, at the Falmouth Goat Dropping. This is for the year 2000, and boy, are we stuck. This is downtown Falmouth. I am standing in the middle of the main intersection, which is also the only intersection in town. And there's the township building. This is what we're going to be doing tonight. And that's it. That's the whole town. Okay, just to give you an idea of where we are in Pennsylvania. We are there. And where's that darn sign? There you go. So just south of the Harrisburg International Airport, and you can't see it tonight because it's dark, but we are also, also just south, we are just south of another famous place called Three Mile Island Nuclear Plant. And I think you may have heard of it a few years back when they had a little spot of trouble down there. There you go, there's the big sign. Now usually that says, welcome to Falmouth, next race. And it'll give the date of the next goat race, but uh, they covered that part up. No, that's not the Pennsylvania Turnpike, that's the name of the road. There's only two streets in town, Turnpike Road and Falmouth Road.
I hope we're not going to need these guys tonight, but just in case, here's the Bainbridge Fire Company and Rescue Company. Bainbridge is our other village. Kenoi Township is a small township in the western part of Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. It's mostly a rural area, a lot of preserved farmland and a lot of land uh, just being farmed in general. And there are only two villages in the township, and that's Falmouth and Bainbridge. Okay, there's the other street, just to prove we're here. We have the only store in town, the new village store, and they are definitely famous for their subs. Okay, why don't you tell me who you are and why you're famous? Well, you can answer all those questions yourself, Wendy. Since you're no, out. can. I was born and raised in Falmouth and lived here all my life, which I guess that's what that means. And uh, tonight we're celebrating the new millennium by luring the goat and burning the boo. We're going to have fireworks a little bit later on. Now, what is your uh, claim to fame, Ken? Well, my claim to fame is I married a beautiful woman and have a woman and have ten grandkids. This man is so modest. He's a former Pennsylvania state representative for how many years? Twenty years. Twenty years. Yeah. And a good representative at that. Well, Thanks, thank Ken. you. Now we're having some excitement. They're going to be doing something called the burning of the boo, which is not as bad as it sounds, apparently. They've got a pile of bamboo here. Now wait, we have somebody who can explain. Hi, why don't you tell me who you are? I'm Glenn Hippo. Okay. Can you explain what the burning of the boo is? Well, uh, yeah, uh, Ken is going to have a... Uh a uh, reading after a while, explaining it pretty good. Okay. There, uh, there, uh, they will, I have it uh, written out that uh, there's a connection between goat raising and burning bamboo. And places in this world where they keep goats, and they actually can find goats in, uh, in bamboo, in, in bamboo cages and uh, fences. And uh, the bamboo gets out of, out of, uh, gets out of order and it gets too much, they have to cut it and they store it. Then on the special occasions, they burn bamboo and have dances and they do it on certain occasions like weddings or uh, childbirth or uh, funerals even. And uh, they find many reasons to have celebrations. And they burn bamboo, and they're too uh, poor to buy fireworks. So they use the explosion of the bamboo for their fireworks. It explodes? And uh, it's quite that, loud. That explains the, the fire trucks. <laughs> Pardon me? That explains the fire trucks. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we're going to touch this bamboo off in a little while, and you're going to hear something. You can hear it a half a mile away. OK. So um, I had some girls going to make a uh, have a pantomime, but I don't think they made it. I'm very disappointed. But they would have been dressed in, in native costumes, and uh, we're going to even have some native music pretty soon. What, native of uh, oriental areas where bamboo yes, grass? oriental music. Okay. I have it recorded, and uh, I, I'm kind of disappointed it didn't show up. I've been well, looking for it. it's a little cold for dancing in grass skirt, I can tell you that. <laughs> yeah. But I suppose to keep warm and the fire will be uh, burning. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Good, up at the top of the pole. Check. He's going to be there for a while yet. And uh, make sure you buy a lot of uh, extra tickets. We've got to pay for all the fireworks and this bamboo we had shipped here from the South Pacific. Sure. Can I get you to tell me who you are and what you're doing? Well, I'm testing. My name's Brian Putt. I'm testing the, the rockets. Make sure they go off. Okay, we're going to be launching some rockets tonight. Yep. Outside, I present. Oh yes. Okay. How many rockets do you have here? Sticking in the ceiling. How many? Twenty-two. Twenty-two rockets. Now, who made all these rockets? These are model rockets. Some the kids in town have made. Okay. We had a. We 
sat at the table in the back of the store and put them together, and some just some of the adults put together. Okay. Like clerks and things put them together. And this uh, local, these two, this one and this one are new entrants today, and they're from some local boys. Is this something you do every year as part of the uh, goat dropping? Yes. It yes. is. This has been around since the inception of the goat of the goat. Can you give us um, a little of the history of the goat dropping? The lowering of the goat came around because of the strawberry, I think, in Harrisburg. And since we raised goats in the summer, that was why they decided on lowering the goats. And when did this start? That's what we were just discussing. I think that was probably the 92, 93, going into 93 year. Okay. And the goat races have been going on for since the years. first goat race. 20, it's 20 years now. Well, it was 1979. It was the third October in '79, or the third Saturday in October in '79. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. The village of Falmouth. We're going to burn bamboo. A burning of the boo. We got the official boo uh, burner out here. We'll be okay. <laughs> Wait till I get myself. You know the burning, the bamboo burner. We're going to. Uh, what can you tell me about this gentleman? He's been doing this for about at least 40 years. Oh, so I never. He's experienced. He's experienced to do this. Oh, okay. There was a history of big bad Yeah, that's Jack how do you know the different decks? Well, we use one deck. We are. I'm saying, are they different on the back? Yeah, they're all different. All you every deck I've ever had. Is that another view? Southwest for Hey, Glenn. Hey, Glenn, where are you at? Come on, Glenn, we want to see this burning of the boo. He's going inside to hide. I don't know. Jack, come here. What? This is Rebecca Hutt. Actually, she's in the Republic. Yeah, you, you advertise in our book. Yeah, well, so you can ask me. I heard every time. And her husband is. I'm in. That's my dad, Ken. Yeah. Theo, you got the video, Wendy? You bet. And we got to send this to CNN. So you're going to make sure that we got a good video here? This is not going to CNN. Yeah, it's going this, to CNN. This is going to the Montel Williams oh, the, show. Oh, uh, heck with Montel Williams. Ah, okay. <laughs> Really, I thought that was supposed to be here today, isn't it? I'm it. Oh, you're it. They're picking the tape up on Monday. Oh, yeah. I'm serious. They're okay, Jake. Oh, they're okay. Okay. This is what happens when you let grown men play with matches. And he likes the match. It's a match made in heaven, right, Glenn? Are we going to, this is going to be okay. Are we going to see something by 2 o'clock this morning, Glenn? Or? <laughs> now, we're going to have a contest here, ladies. We get this bamboo burning. This bamboo uh, idea comes from uh, the island of Bulabula in the South Pacific. And before any ritual they had with goats, uh, they turned the climb on a little bit. They burnt this bamboo and made the goats very friendly. What we're going to ask the ladies, if you want to dance in front of this bamboo, we're going to have a contest here. We got the hats to put on. How's that? An announcement. What has to be moved? Which car has to be moved? I don't see a car has to Why does that car have to be moved? Why does it have to be moved? Well, that's our... Oh! Whose car is it? Oh! That's not a smart thing to do. Don't do that. Glenn, man after my own heart. <laughs> oh my like God. Sounds like that already, Glenn. <laughs> this is what happens when Beavis and Butthead grow up. When are you guys to hear the cracking and the popping, Glenn? Here we go. This is starting to catch. Very soon. Okay, here's the burning of the boo. I know. I told you my ain't changed, man. I ain't Oh, there it goes. Ha, ha, ha.
Yep, it's still burning. something more exuberant than this year, but it was, we'll still have the dropping of the goat. That goat actually came from Foulmouth, Nova Scotia. That's something very few people know. Is that the sister town, sister city of Foulmouth? Pardon? Is it like a sister city? Right, sister okay. city of Foulmouth, Nova Scotia. Uh, gave us that goat uh, probably six, seven years ago. They actually made it and had it sent down here for us. Everybody else has... Well, tell me about the goat races. Well, the goat races are actually, uh, we're coming up on the 21st year for the goat races. Uh, they've advanced from about 10 goats a race to uh, 70 to 80 goats a race this year. People come all over Pennsylvania, all over uh, the eastern coast to, to race their goats. And the goat race is just part of it. There's a lot of food stands, craft stands, and a whole day of fun. And yes, we do race the goats around the track. There's no betting at the track, but off to the side, we understand there's betting takes place. Ooh. So now people should know that these goats are attached by a leash to a person. They must have a six-foot leash, and the, the handler must be able to run as fast as the goat. The handler and the goat must cross the finish line. The distance that they run is secret. Uh, we don't let that out because we don't want someone copycat. <laughs> only the goat master knows exact length of the track. Who's the goat master? Dave Gerber. 
He set up the first track, and every year since he sets up, he's the only one that knows the length of the track. Okay, thanks, Steve. All right. <laughs> Start dropping it. There we go. There's a date.
these Rockets. You didn't know where your blacksmith was and... It's all about being at the right place at the right time. Celebrate from the driver's seat in a new Ford Escort or ZX2. Now, during the Ford Authorized Clearance, get $2,000 cash back on 99 Ford Escort and ZX2. That's $2,000 cash back on both. Celebrate in a new set of wheels during the Ford Authorized Clearance at your Quality Plus Ford dealer. Here we are at the big premiere, and you know what we're all looking at? The clothes. What are you wearing there, Mom? I'm wearing elbow and cookie, Mom. We love cookies. Me love cookies, too. Honey, play to the camera. Always play to the camera. How are you, sweetheart? Fine. Oh, a big bird. <laughs> yes. Three. You like big birds? What else would kids wear to the adventures of Elmo in Grouchland? The Sesame Street Collection, brought to you by the letter K. And here come the stars. Are you ready to meet your fans? Yay! Hardy's 99 cent spicy chicken sandwich. Tender white meat inside, spicy and crispy outside. Just 99 cents at Hardy's. Where the food's the star. You watch the action on ABC 27. Now, meet the player who scored the winning goal. On Friday, September 3rd, join Brandy Chastain of the World Cup Championship team for a question and answer session at 2 and 3 at Hershey Park. Then, later during the Hershey Wildcats game, join Brandy for an autograph session. Presented in part by ABC 27. On the town on the Millersburg Ferry at 11. Don and Marie have their own talk show these days. And if you remember the fun they used to have on television, well, nothing, nothing has changed. What? Tonight. On Donnie and Marie. Now, this is the end of a long, hard day here, and Donnie and Marie had the giggles. Tonight. <laughs> Let's get this down. Tonight on Donnie. <laughs> <laughs> they don't need this one. Okay, come on. Here we go. This is it. All right. I've got it. You ready? Here we go. Tonight on Donnie and Marie. <laughs> Today on Donnie and Marie. <laughs> Today on Donnie and Marie. <laughs> Come on, it's so easy. It's so easy. Come on. It's easy. <laughs> At least you work with uh, an unusually talented guy every week, uh, D.L. Hughley. Yeah, D.L.'s unusual, all right. Oh, you know what? I better be careful because he's a creator and executive producer of the show. Fear not. Whatever you say will stay between you and me and a few million people watching around the world. Uh, <laughs> anyhow, as you know, D.L. started out as a very inventive stand-up comedian, so you got to watch a few of these bloopers like this one. You fine. I don't need you either. <laughs> Daryl, what is your problem? What problem, girl? Can a man have a kind of Cause you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> now the script calls for DL to have trouble getting the bottle out of the vending machine, but not this much trouble. <laughs> Watch him try to ad lib here. Oh. Daryl. Did he ever get the bottle out of that thing? Eventually, but that wasn't the end of his problems. You gotta watch this scene with John Hinton. 
Uh-oh, all the good stuff. Yes, oh. indeed. Then see that cheap stuff in there? That's for Yvonne and her so-called friends. But this and this here is our private stuff. Mm. <laughs> we come a long way. <laughs> no. Well, might as well get to up now. <laughs> <laughs> of course, DL is used to playing nightclubs where all kinds of language is permissible. And sometimes he forgets he's on television. <laughs> I'm sure there's a way for us to get through to him without hurting his creativity. Oh, well, we're going to get through to him all right, and we're not even going to touch his creativity. Of course, his ass is his... <laughs> Now, at least you mentioned that D.L. is the executive producer of the show. Does that ever, uh, you know, like come into play when you're doing a scene? Well, you know how it's not very advisable to correct your boss, right? Right. So in this scene, I just kind of pretended like he did it perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> I've been all day with the kids, Daryl. They're not spoiled. They're just trying to be like their new friends. It's normal. Normal? Well, they new friends gonna get, put up, get us put back in the poorhouse. Uh, it's no secret you are a uh, you're a very beautiful woman. Oh, I thank you, dear. No, no, thank <laughs> you because not only does your beauty cause people to stop and say, mm -hmm, I'm one of those, but it also causes bloopers too. Oh. Watch DL try to get through these very <clears throat> sexy scenes. You know, those things are important. I, I really mean it. And baby, success. makes me so sick, it ain't funny. I'm a player, I can't do that. Nope. Let's make it happen. All right! <laughs> hey! Woo-hoo! Hey, Take it from me. I done you got my lines now. <laughs> so unbelievable, we don't have any bloopers of you. You know, you're right. You know, I can't believe that myself. Well, <laughs> neither could we, to tell you the truth. So we, uh, we got a hold of DL and asked for the <clears throat> special reel. Oh, the Snooty Fox Motel? Baby, that's for us. I know what it's for. <laughs> oh, baby, as romantic as Snooty sounds, I can't. I gotta take Sydney to Jim. Um, yeah. <laughs> The Snooty Fox? Oh, baby, that place is for Oh, we know what that place is for. <laughs> <laughs> oh, baby, as romantic as Snooty sounds, I can't. I gotta take Sydney. Oh. <laughs> I can't get it. Okay, okay. We can change it to the Motel 6? No, no, no. <laughs> At least I hope if you get some more bloopers, uh, you will certainly let us hear from you. Promise? <laughs> it's a promise. It's actually more than a promise. When you work with D.L. Hughley, bloopers are guaranteed. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I love to hear. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Coming up, Ponzi bloopers from Happy Days with Ron Howard and Henry Winkler. Did you know that when you buy McDonald's Chicken McNuggets, you get these wonderful mechanically embroidered white napkins at no extra charge. And you'll need lots of napkins because these golden McDonald's Chicken McNuggets come with any one of four dipping sauces. Imagine that. The exquisite taste of those delectable delights coupled with hours of dipping and cleaning fun for the whole family. All this can be yours. Where? Did somebody say McDonald's? Napkins retain no value after initial use. DOD's only McNuggets come in 6, 9, and 20 teeth.
guess what's popping up everywhere? Extra classic bubble gum, because the flavor lasts longer than ever. 48 extra. So you can enjoy blowing bunches of extra bubbles. 36 extra. The flavor and the bubbles will just keep on going. Mm, 23 extra. So what are you waiting for? Try extra classic bubble gum. The flavor you love lasts longer than ever. too early to share in your child's education. Gateway makes a PC with an extra kid-friendly keyboard and learning software for very young minds. Call us and get a Gateway Kid Builder PC with an Intel Celeron processor for just $947. When you look into space, is anything looking back? The more we learn about the universe, the more it seems almost impossible we're all alone. Brave New World, next. Friday. She said she was raped. What would you do if it were your daughter? A father's fury and the real price of revenge. 2020 Friday. You know, Elise, sometimes uh, a blown dialogue can sort of be contagious. You, you've seen it happen on your show, I know, but in this particular outtake from America's Funniest Home Videos, Daisy Fuentes stumbles slightly over the words prize train. Mm. Then watch what happens next, courtesy of her co-host, John Fugel, saying. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, it's time to get this big prize train rolling, folks. Now it's not just our studio audience voting for the winner, you know. No, when the big tri prize train gets rolling, it's our tradition. <laughs> the what? <laughs> the tri train. <laughs> Sorry, Swayze dentist. <laughs> it's our tradition to get the opinion of another city as well. When it comes to matters of six figures, and in this case, we went to New Orleans. That's right. We were there earlier this week when John was able to speak, right? And then, <laughs> then we, we spent our... <laughs> oh, ho, 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 ho. <laughs> That's the sound of your glass house shattering. <laughs> you get it. We sent a very special correspondent down there to That's cover all... That's what I was going to say. I said that already. The action. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> You know, in the early days of television, if a performer had a difficult name to pronounce, they would take a, a stage name. I mean, for instance, uh, 